Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are standing in a lonely forest clearing, the dawn turned gray by the creeping fog. While standing only yards from you, his eyes filled with his hate for you, is a man who's come to take your life, unless you first take his. Listen now as Escape brings you The Second Shot, a story based on the classic tale by Alexander Dumas. Gentlemen, ready? Yes, yes, get on with it. There is no way by which you can compose your differences, settle your quarrel, except by this. Lieutenant Domier? There is none. Lieutenant Moussin? I am not the challenger. Lieutenant Domier is. If my opponent wishes to withdraw at this point with a certain loss of honor... The lieutenant course, forgets himself. My apologies. Monsieur, will you be kind enough to proceed? Very well. Your seconds have examined these pistols and pronounced them perfectly matched. They are loaded. Will you make your choice, Lieutenant Domier? This one should do nicely. Lieutenant Lucin. Gentlemen, you will take your places. Here, where I have planted my saber in the ground, back to back, if you please. You will raise your pistols to shoulder height, hold them pointed upward. Good. Now the terms of the duel are these. On Major Cole's count, you will walk slowly away from each other. On the count of ten, you will turn and fire. Regardless of the effects of the shots, the duel is then declared finished and the quarrel ended. Is that satisfactory to both of you? Quite satisfactory. Yes, of course. Are you ready, Major Cole? Yes. There's no other way of... Yes, I'm ready. Gentlemen. At your pleasure. Yes, yes, go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Dr. Bajou, hurry, please. See what you can do for him. The son had a premonition this would happen, Major Culver. He didn't need a premonition. Common sense could have told him. True. Domier never misses. Well. Is he dead, Major? Fact, I think, is obvious. Congratulations, Lieutenant Domier. Once again, you have distinguished yourself by your excellent shooting. It's unfortunate, however, that you so often see fit to direct it against your own comrades in arms. He insulted me, sir. A man must defend Good day, his... Lieutenant. <laughs> Lieutenant Domier reporting as requested, sir. That is, Lieutenant. Let me see here. According to this dossier, you were assigned to my regiment some seven months ago, having just been commissioned from the Academy of saint Cyr. Yes, sir. And though the regiment has not been engaged in military action during that period, you have shown exemplary ability in the performance of duties assigned to you. Thank you, sir. Your official record is excellent, and it can be assumed you will give a good account of yourself when we move against Vienna at the end of the month. I hope so, sir. However... I am more concerned at the moment with your unofficial record, Lieutenant Dormier, 
Sir? One week after your assignment to my command, you challenged subaltern Mikolov to a duel and shot and killed him. He insulted me, sir. Six weeks later, you challenged Lieutenant Deville to a duel, shot and killed him. But I was only... Two defense... months after that, Captain Morancy, your bullet smashed his shoulder and he was forced to retire from the service. Three weeks ago, your victim was Lieutenant Leclerc, who still lingers in the hospital. Does the colonel know that all... Now, this officers... morning... Near the forest of Marengo, you shot and killed the leader of my 8th platoon, Lieutenant Musin. The duel was conducted fairly, it sir. It was murder. You're a dead shot with a pistol. Those men didn't have a chance against you. Then they should not be so free with their insults, Colonel. A gentleman has the right to defend his honor. Lieutenant Daumier, if all you know of honor is what you have learned on the dueling field, then I fear your education has been arrested at a very primitive stage. I resent your implication. If you care to withdraw your remark at once, perhaps... Lieutenant, shall... attention! Yes, sir. Lieutenant Daumier. You were on the point of issuing a challenge to your commanding officer while standing for an official interview. You were aware of the penalty for such an action, are you not? Yes, sir, the guillotine. Lieutenant, in seven months I've lost five men. Excellent officers, all of them. Sacrificed to that exalted sense of honor of yours. Well... There'll be no more of it. Do you understand? But, sir, if I... you persist in this career of mayhem, if you challenge another man of this regiment, I will convene a court of inquiry. If that court should find your provocation insufficient, and I am quite sure that it would, I will have you stripped of your commission and thrown out of the army. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Any questions, Lieutenant? With the Colonel's permission, yes. The Colonel has mentioned the penalty for challenging one superior officer under official restraint. But suppose such a challenge should be given in circumstances which are not official and for reasons which are personal. In that case, there is no penalty, Lieutenant Daumier. Thank you, sir. Dismissed. Mind if I step in, Colonel? Of course not. Come in, Major. Saw Daumier leaving. He was boiling. What did you do to him? Tried to threaten some of that boyish nonsense out of his head with somewhat dubious success, I'm afraid. He has a hellish temper, all right. <laughs> he was in one of my courses at Saint Cyr. He needs a campaign to settle him down. He'll get it. The orders are confidential, but the little corporal arrives in two weeks. Ah. We move against Vienna the week after. Good. The regiment needs shaking down. Confound it, Major Cole. Daumier is worth saving if there's any way of doing it. He could be the best junior officer in the regiment if he'd only grow up. If, if he could only develop the slightest maturity. Now, do you realize that I am barely 12 years older than he is? It's the campaigns. Italy, Egypt, you had to grow up. Wait till we move against the Austrian army. That'll settle him down. I hope so. Oh, well, by the way, Colonel, do hmm? you recall my telling you of a niece of mine? Uh, Marianne? Yes. Well, she's here. Came up from saint Cyr this afternoon for a surprise visit. I wondered if you would care to join us at dinner tonight. Yeah, of course. Well, then it's settled. Uh, forget about Daumier. He'll straighten out in time. Possibly. If he doesn't destroy himself first. Or someone else. Or someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Pierrot, you're a most remarkable man. Oh, remarkable? I've been telling it to Marianne for three years now. But the way you described him, Uncle Jean, I had pictured a battle-scarred veteran of a dozen campaigns, oh. tired and worn, and even older than you are. Oh, 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 heaven forbid. But instead I find... Well... You, uh, find what, Marianne? <laughs> no, not another word. I fear I may have said enough now to turn your head. Oh, I rather think you'll find his head a bit more firmly attached than those of the cadets you know at Saint Cyr. Huh? Oh, Uncle Jean, what a thing to say. Uh, Captain Dautrec has just come in. There's a matter I'd like to see him about, if you'll excuse me, sir. Yes, of course, Major. Uh, well, uh, Marianne, uh, how long will you be here? A week, possibly two, unless the campaign begins sooner. Oh, I know, it's a dark secret. But there is gossip, of course. 
I see. Oh, they're going to dance. Of course I accept. I'd love to. Oh, no, really, really oh, now. Oh, uh... come on. There's much less danger in a cotillion than there is in a cavalry charge. <laughs> is there? My arm, Marianne. And that thin blue line far across the valley there, almost hidden in the haze. What is that, Colonel Perrault? The Danube. Oh. It's an objective once we open the campaign. The campaign. Danger, death. It's difficult to imagine when everything is so peaceful now. The birds, flowers, even the hills are happy today. And you, my dear? I'm happy, too. Very happy. Then forget the campaign. Today, it doesn't matter. And what does matter today? You. I? You must have known it. I'm not experienced at hiding such things. Marianne. I uh, I think the carriage driver is anxious to leave. The devil take the carriage driver. <laughs> Why, you're more impetuous than a cadet. Where are you concerned? It's getting late. Marianne. No, please. We, we only met three days ago. A week, then. Will a week be long enough, my dear? I think perhaps it will. Ask me then. Tommy, are you there? Assembly and review in five minutes. Are you ready? Yes, if I can get this tunic straight. There. Here's your saber. Hmm. Full review every third day now. Something must be up. The Austrian campaign will move in a matter of days. Mark my words. I hope you're right. Dormier, there's something I think you ought to know. We'd better go. Wait. You told me once that uh, while you were at the academy, you exchanged rings with Marianne Call, the major's niece, right? Yes, we're planning to be married. She wrote me she'd try to come here for a visit, but so far she... Dormier. What? Dormier, she's here. Here? She's been here for a week. A week? Where? What's she been doing? Dining, dancing, driving in the countryside, walking in the garden, the usual activities of a girl who's been courted. Courted? By whom? By our commanding officer, my friend. Colonel Perrault, that's a lie. It's true, don't you? The major introduced them. The whole regiment is known, but they've kept it from you. From me as well, knowing I was your friend. I just heard of it. What are you going to do about it, don't you? We'll see, Armand. Now let's go. You are listening to The Second Shot, tonight's presentation on Escape. On CBS Radio's Saturday night series called Gunsmoke, we go back to the early West for the exploits of United States Marshal Matt Dillon. On most of these same stations, CBS Radio brings you the excitement of Gunsmoke every Saturday night. And now, Escape, and Act Two of The Second Shot. leaving us, Major? If you will excuse me, yes, it's bedtime for a man my age. Good night, Uncle Jean. Good night, my dear. Colonel? Good night, Major. Marianne. Yes? Do you know what day this is? Well, it's the day before tomorrow, of course, and uh, a day later than yesterday. But beyond that, I must confess I've lost track of the time. It's a week. One week today. You said a week should be long enough, my dear. I did. I love you, Marianne. It seems so strange. 
For you who have been so many places, known so many women. I don't remember any women. For you to love me, who knows nothing and has been nowhere. <laughs> the cadets at the academy. Oh, not one of them mattered. Not as you matter, my dear. Marianne. Then you will marry me. Oh, could it be at this time of night? Mm, I, I suppose we should answer it. Wait, I hear Uncle Jean coming down. He'll see who it is. <laughs> Good. I'm much too comfortable to move. And the view from here is excellent. View? You, my dear. Oh. <laughs> Lieutenant Dornier? Rather oh, late, thanks. Lieutenant. My compliments to Colonel Ferro, Major. Tell him I'd like a word with him. And tell him it's personal rather than official. Quite personal. Have the lieutenant come in, Major Cole. I gathered from your remarks to Major Call at the door that you are not here on official military business. The colonel has an excellent sense of hearing. It's too bad his sense of decency is not equally admirable. Lieutenant, may I remind you that you're addressing your superior officer? I am aware of it, Major. Then while you're in my home, you'll conduct yourself in a manner proper to your rank. My manner is proper enough for a man who's been grossly offended. I'm certain the colonel will admit that the provocation he has given me is... Lieutenant Domier! Let him talk, Major... What provocation do you fancy I have given you, Lieutenant? I would prefer to discuss the matter without the presence of Major Cole's niece. Domia, you're being a fool. I was once, but no longer. You know each other? Ask your niece, Major. Stop it, Domier. We were both fools, mere children. Oh, and now, in less than a year, you have grown up, become a lady, the Colonel's lady, no less. Though you show little regard for his feelings, since I perceive you still wear my ring on a chain about your throat. Take it. Here. Each day I meant to give it back, but I put it off. It meant nothing. It meant a pledge of betrothal once. Shall I remind you of the circumstances, our children's words, our children's actions? Marianne, I must add my request to the lieutenants. Will you leave us alone, please? Yes. Will you go, my dear? Very well, Uncle Jean. Colonel Perrault, I... I... Nothing. Lieutenant, were you implying some sort of understanding between you and Marianne before she came here to visit? Is the colonel trying to imply he was not aware of it? I was not. You lie, Lieutenant. Never mind, Major. I think our young friend hardly knows what he's saying. Then you choose to ignore my insult? Well, I will not be so lenient, Colonel Perrault. Captain Armand will call at your quarters tonight and arrange the affair. A duel? You are challenging your commanding officer? With the colonel's permission, of course. Naturally, he can refuse to accept. I accept. No, Colonel. I shall expect Captain Armand at my quarters later. Colonel Perrault. And now, Lieutenant Daumier, you are a fool. A brash, unreasoning young fool. I'm telling you that quite officially. Dismissed. Hmm. He's taking his time. It's ten o'clock. Captain Armand is hardly as reckless as Daumier. I imagine it's taking some persuasion to get him to act in this matter. Do as I suggest, Colonel. Demand that the duel be fought with sabers. I saw you on the barricades at Ferenzi. Everyone would believe the choice was made through cowardice. It's well known that the lieutenant fights with a pistol, so be it then. But he's a dead shot. He'll kill you. The probabilities are in his favor. Then how in the name of heaven can you sit there and be so calm about it? Calm? Major, I am anything but calm. No, no, no. no. Not about the possibility of death. I've spent my life with death. Cheated it for years. When it comes, it comes, and for me, it's overdue. It's not death. It's Marianne. Oh, she was young. Too young. Not yet awakened. As she said herself, a childish thing. It meant nothing. I am not so sure, Major. Perhaps the strength and surge of my own feeling may have blinded me to hers. She's been here a week and made no effort to see him. But she wore his ring. You see my position, Major. If I should kill him, 
It would be a terrible injury to her. And on the other hand, should the result be reversed, her life with him would be clouded forever by the thought that she had brought about my death. First you insist on believing she cares for Domier. I can see no other explanation. Except the obvious one. But Maria. I am not ordinarily an eavesdropper. Any more than I am other things you seem to believe I am. Marianne, at this hour, a gentleman's quarters are I think I'm amply for... chaperoned by Uncle Jean. In fact, too much so for what I have to say. I'll wait in the passage outside, Colonel. Keep an eye out for Captain Armand. Do you believe I have played with your affections? Treated your love lightly for some feeling of vanity in such a conquest? I don't condemn you, my dear. My rank, perhaps, an air of experience. Anyone can be misled for a week. I meant what I said to Domier. It was a childish thing. So there is no reason for this duel, you see. You can't go through with it now. But I have to, my dear. There's nothing else I can do. Domier is being a fool. Must you be one, too? I have no choice. Under the circumstances, I can own... It's Captain Armand. Yes. Come. Yes, you can go out this way. Be it's better he not see you here. But the duel, you must not risk your life. Life is risk, Marianne. Now, goodbye, my dear. Come in, Captain Armand. At ease, Captain. Yes, sir. Major Cull here has kindly agreed to act as my second... The precise details of time and place can be arranged between you. Yes, sir. But as to the conditions of the duel itself, I wish to state definite requirements. This is, of course, my right as the challenged party. Lieutenant Domier has instructed me to accept whatever conditions you may impose, sir. Good. And here they are. Dueling pistols, of course. Very good. The distance? Two paces. Two paces? Correct. Colonel, are you sure of what you are saying? Two paces? It is impossible to miss. Each of us shall take his position and aim at his opponent and may fire his shot at will after the count of three. But I... Now, a final condition, Captain. One of the pistols will not be loaded. I hardly know what... To... Colonel, it means certain death for one of you. For well, the one who draws the empty gun leaves everything else to chance. Better so than leave it to the lieutenant's marksmanship. Well, Captain? The Major is right. The result is purely a matter of chance, sir. Which is proper, I think, in an affair of honor. Shouldn't fate be given a hand in the matter? Well, do you decline my terms, Captain Armand? No, we can't decline. It's your right. Very well, Colonel. On behalf of Lieutenant Dormier, I accept. Colonel, you're being as foolish as he is. Stop now before it's too late. I think it's too late now, Major Cole. It appears they're all here ahead of us. It can only mean tragedy, no matter what happens. Good morning, gentlemen. Hello. 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 Monsieur Dautrec, I understand that you are to officiate. If the colonel pleases. Of course. Pistols are in this case. I've already seen to the loading. Do you know which is the loaded gun, colonel? It doesn't matter, since Lieutenant Daumier will have first choice. Quite so. Will you choose your weapon, Lieutenant? I will. <clears throat> you hesitate, Lieutenant. I was told you always approach these affairs with a certain ease and confidence. This one. That is your final choice, Lieutenant? Yes. Very well. Colonel. Thank you. If you will take your places, gentlemen... The sabers are planted in the ground two paces apart. You will stand back of them and face your opponent. Are you ready, gentlemen? At your pleasure, monsieur. Lieutenant Dumier. Yes, of course. Get on with it. You understand that neither of you will fire before the count of three? Good. 
Gentlemen, you will take aim. You're trembling, Lieutenant. Did you tremble in your other duels? Count. Go ahead and count. One, two, three. <laughs> Fate seems to be against you, Lieutenant Daumier. You drew the empty gun. Fire. Fire and get it over with. It's a new feeling for you, isn't it, Lieutenant? Looking into the muzzle of a pistol and knowing it holds death for you. It's a feeling five of your previous opponents had. A feeling one learns in campaigns and battles. At the same time, one learns the real meaning of honor. It's called fear, Lieutenant. Fire, you devil. Don't torture him, Colonel. Do as he says. Get it over with. Torture! Is his torture any greater than that he imposed on others? Men who meant no insult to him, but were forced to face certain death from his marksmanship because of his self-acclaimed sense of honor? Is it too bad such drastic measures as this were required to bring to an end your career of slaughter, Lieutenant? Fire! Pull the trigger! We back up you, Colonel. Very well, gentlemen. An end to your last duel, Lieutenant. A misfire. A miracle. No. Quite the contrary. Lieutenant Daumier... Next week, we move against Austria, and France will have need of all her officers. I did not wish to waste your life or mine. Neither of the pistols was loaded. Under the direction of Norman MacDonnell, Escape has brought you the second shot based on a story by Alexander Dumas, specially adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield, starring John Daner with Vic Perrin. Featured in the cast were Ellen Morgan, Ben Wright, Harry Bartell, Jack Crucian, and Lou Krugman, your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are standing at the entrance of a walled Arab town. While behind you, coming slowly through the night, are the shuffling footsteps of a blind beggar who will lead you into a harrowing world of darkness and terror. So listen next week when Escape brings you Kathleen Height's terrifying story, The Return. <laughs> Your purchase of Easter seals is your way of extending the only aid there is for the crippled and disabled. Organized hospital, clinical, and laboratory campaigns to cure the curable and to lessen the burdens of those who can't be completely well again. Buy Easter seals. Make your generous contribution a fighting force to expand treatment, research, and education. The three weapons of hope and cure for the crippled and disabled in America. America listens most to the CBS radio network.